I'd like to call to order the regular city commission meeting for April 21st, 2020 at seven o'clock. Can we please have roll call? Commissioner Drosky. Here. Commissioner Hudak. Here. Commissioner Preston. Commissioner Preston. He, he's here, but he's saying he can't hear us. Vice Mayor Parnes. Here. Mayor Gantz. Here. Uh, Vice Mayor Parnes, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Absolutely. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic, the republic for which it stands, one, which it stands. Nation. one nation under God, God. indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. for all. Thank you. If we could have approval of the regular of the city commission meeting minutes for the regular city commission meeting of 7, 2020. Motion to approve. We have a motion from Commissioner Hudak. Second. Second from Vice Mayor Parnes. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, passes unanimously. We're gonna wait one moment, see if we can figure out this technical difficulty with uh, Commissioner Preston. I don't want him to miss out on anything. If, we, if you don't mind waiting for one moment. Jim, I'm going to listen a little while longer here to see if we can make sure we can get uh, Commissioner Preston in. We'll give him a couple more minutes and then we can move with the approval of the agenda and then we can move on to the next item. I don't believe that will require uh, Commissioner Preston's uh, on that. Samantha, we're going to move forward with the approval of the agenda. Okay. Okay. Uh, if we could have approval of the agenda for April 21st, 2020. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Hudak, seconded by Vice Mayor Parnes. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. We'll move forward on that. Um, Samantha, how close are we to Commissioner Preston? Um, at this point, he was supposed to be calling in. We gave him instructions on how to do so. Okay. But I don't see him right now. All right. Um, do we have anybody? Uh, uh, Mr. Soroka, we'll let you go ahead and move forward then. Your meeting ID, followed by town. He's on mute. Thank you, City Clerk. We are now at the public comment portion of the agenda. Persons addressing the commission shall state his or her name and address may speak for three minutes unless extended for one additional minute by the mayor. All remarks by the public at a commission meeting uh, on an agenda item should be addressed when that agenda item is called. The purpose of this public comment section is for items that you would like to discuss that are not on the agenda. As a reminder, no comments shall be made related to the personal life or personal qualities of any person and no language which would offend persons of ordinary sensibility shall be permitted. Uh, and city clerk, I don't know if you wanna add here any instruction for those folks who may have called in as to how they raise their hand or how they wanna participate for public comments. Yes, for anyone who called- Why don't you put your volume down? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Madam Clerk. For anyone who called in, if you want to speak during public comment, you can dial from your phone by pressing star nine. If you are dialed into the video, you can raise your hand by clicking on your video and going to more and selecting raise hand. Uh, Madam, do you have anybody that is submitted to speak? One moment, I'm gonna double check again, hold on for me. Uh, no, sir. Okay. Um, see any show of hands? That's anything, I'm gonna close the public portion to be heard then. 
Item number one. One on the agenda is a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, appointing Sally Ling to the Historic Preservation Board and providing for an effective date. Okay. Uh, Ross, do you see you sponsored this? Do you have any comments on this item? I do. I was just raising my hand. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we created uh, not too long ago the Historic Preservation Board, and I'm lucky to have multiple residents in my district with a rich history um, here in Deerfield Beach, but in particular, Sally Ling um, has um, agreed to serve on this board. She not only is a resident of District 4, but she's a noted author. She's written um, a book about Deerfield Beach and its history, uh, so I can't think of anyone better with a knowledge of our community uh, to put on this board, and that's why I'm nominating her. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think Ms. Ling's an excellent uh, recommendation for this. One thing I want to correct in the backup, which I believe is incorrect, talks about uh, myself having a position open on this board. I do believe when we set up this board this that uh, the, the commissioners, each district was going to have a representative, but the mayor would not make a selection. Is that accurate? Is this that board? Uh, I would Mr. Have to double check. Mr. Mayor, I believe you're referring to the public art. Oh, my apologies. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, any, any luck with Commissioner Preston yet, Madam Clerk? No, sir. Okay. We're going to go ahead then, uh, looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Hello, can you hear me? Second. Hello? Yes, Commissioner Preston. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Preston, we're uh, now on item number one. The approval. Okay. We have a motion and a second for the appointing Sally Ling to the Historic Preservation Board. Uh, who made the motion? Commissioner Drosky? Uh, no, sir. That was Commissioner Hudak, seconded by Vice Mayor Barnes. Okay. Thank you. We have roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky? Yes. Commissioner Hudak? Yes. Commissioner Parnas? I'm sorry, Commissioner Preston? Yes. Vice Mayor Parnas? Yes. Mayor Gantz? Yes. Okay, item number two is a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, approving a grant agreement with the State Division of Emergency Management for the City's receipt of grant funds related to Hurricane Irma disaster debris removal and other disaster-related emergency measures in the amount of $2,249,910.97, authorizing execution of the grant agreement and providing for an effective date. Any staff comment on this item? Not seeing any, I'm gonna go ahead and, is there anyone from the public to make a comment on this item? Do we have anybody, Madam Mayor? Or Madam uh, Clerk? No, sir, no hands are raised and no emails were received. Perfect, I'm gonna close it to the public then. Uh, Commission for approval, for approval. Preston? Excuse me? Oh, I just to make sure you're still there. Okay. Motion to approve. We have a motion from Commissioner Hudak. Looking for a second? Second. Second, second from uh, Vice Mayor Parnes. We have roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky? Yes. Commissioner Hudak? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Yes. Vice Mayor Parnes? Yes. 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 And we're all still there. Commissioner Preston, you still there? Commissioner Preston? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Perfect. Okay. All right. Uh, next item, Mr. Shiroka. 
Next item is item number three, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, authorized the purchase of license plate reader camera systems, software and related equipment from Vetted Security Solutions LLC in the amount of $277,170 utilizing law enforcement trust funds, providing for execution, severability and an effective date. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have anybody that wrote in to speak on this item? No, sir. Okay, we're open to the public. Do anyone for the public care to comment on this item? Don't see any hands. I'm going to close it to the public. I have uh, Commissioner Hudak and then Commissioner Drosky. Excuse me, Commissioner Drosky and then Commissioner Hudak. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, uh, I'm in support of this tonight. Uh, if you look through the backup, uh, some of the items look a little pricey. I did speak to the captain today regarding this particular issue and we're talking about commercial grade equipment. This isn't something that you can just run to Office Depot and buy. Uh, that's why it's um, more expensive, it's more durable. Uh, the equipment has to be compatible with one another. And in addition, the room in which it's being installed um, and some of the other components to it, um, it's 24 seven use. So it's something that has to be um, of a commercial grade. And that's why it's a little bit higher than, than you might anticipate. Um, but everything is in line and I'm in favor of it. I just wanted to make that comment. Okay, Commissioner Hudak. Um, the question I have is, is this system compatible with the system that we have right now? Uh, is it the same system? Is it compatible with it? Um, I just want to make sure that we're not putting in a whole bunch of different systems that further on down the road, they don't talk to one another or we've got some software issues. So if that could be uh, further expanded upon, it'd be appreciated. And I could do that, Mayor, if you choose. Sure, please do. Thank you, and, and good evening, Mayor, City Commission. David Santucci, City Manager. Um, the equipment is compatible with what is existing, and uh, it, it's compatible with everything that we have within the Operational Tactical Intelligence Center, as well as the cameras that we already have uh, deployed throughout the city. Thank you. Then, I'll, then I'd make a motion to approve. Okay. The motion from Commissioner Hudak. Looking for a second. Second. Okay. Uh, uh, Vice, Mayor Dro uh, Vice Mayor Parnes. Go ahead. Roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky. Yes. Commissioner Hudak. Yes. Commissioner Preston. Yes. Vice Mayor Parnes. Yes. Mayor Gantz. Yes. Next item is item number four, a resolution of the City Commission of Deerfield Beach approving the Evaluation Committee's ranking of proposals pursuant to request for proposals number 20-02 PC for design build construction services for the Center of Active Aging. Authorizing the City Manager to commence contract negotiations with Seabird Builders LLC, the top rank firm, providing for severability and an effective date. And Mr. Mayor, if I could just make some initial comments on this item, if you'd recognize me. Yes, please do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanted to note that last Monday, I received a letter that alleged that the campaign contribution disclosure form submitted by the top ranked proposer uh, was insufficient and had deficiencies. I did remu review the matter and ultimately issued a memo to each one of you. The memo is in the backup. I've also spoken with each one of you individually about the issue uh, and provided what I believe to be what your options are in this case based on the city code. Additionally, I should note I received a memo from Council for Seawood Builders uh, as well in response to my memo and that was given to the clerk and I believe she distributed that to you today. Um, Madam Clerk, is that correct? Did you distribute that to them at the meeting? You could shake your head yes. No, I, I was told that I needed to send it um, when the meeting started. Unfortunately, with all the issues that came up, I was unable to, but I am sending it right now. Okay, so there was a cone of silence in effect, so we had to wait till the meeting, um, but they did provide a memo in response to my memo, and Seawood's council, as I understand it, is here today and would like to present their position as well. The memo will be made a part of the record for the agenda item. And I know I've discussed this with, with all of you, but I'm of course here to answer any questions. Thank you, 
Um, Madam Clerk, is there some anyone from the public that has sent anything in via email? Yes, sir. We have several emails from the public. Okay. If you could read those. Okay, one moment, please. We're opening this to the public. We're going to read from the emails first, and then we'll go with uh, anyone who has their hand raised to speak. We have Mr. Backman and. Uh, Madam Clerk, go right ahead. We have a letter from Alice Taylor, CEO of Broward Health North. She is writing in support of the, the Masseys and also Seawood Builders for this project. The next email comes from Richard Hopper of eThink Print, and he is also supporting the Seawood Builders in this project and also advises that an oversight for any campaign contribution should not have any bearing on the decision in this, in this proposal. Next email is Dave Noterer. He also is speaking in support of Betty Massey and Seawood Builders. Next, we have an email from Adam Corrin, and he too is also speaking in support of Betty Massey and Seawood Builders, and also commented on her integrity and her character. Next email is from Rick Jordan. He is speaking in support of the bid for the Center for Active Aging for Seawood Builders. And he also outlines his experiences with both Ed and Betty Massey. Next, we have an email from Jeff Anderson with Store All. He's speaking in support of the project for Seawood Builders and Betty Massey, as well as asking that there not be any backlash for not listing a political contribution. Next, we have Audra Durham from Wyndham, who is also speaking up for Betty Massey and this project. And also she talks about Ms. Massey's dedication and passion for the city. And the last email we received is from Glenn Sullivan. Glenn Sullivan asks that the bid be rejected and due to not being sufficient, with their backup and their proposal documents. He also suggested that the bid go to the second bidder or to reject all the bids and to start over. The third option would be for the city commission to rewrite the, the proposals and only listing two and three. And then the final opinion that he states is to send the ranking back to the evaluation committee. And those are all of the emails that are received. And just as Anthony mentioned, we do have, pursuant to our code of ethics, we do have their, their um, outlines, their contributions outlined in the agenda backup. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, we have uh, Scott Backman. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Great. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, good to see all of you, even, even if you can't see me. Um, definitely unique uh, situation. Scott Backman representing Seawood Builders. Um, need my address as well, Madam Clerk? Yes, Anthony's saying yes. 14 Southeast 4th Street in Boca Raton is my office address just up the street from City Hall. Um, so Anthony presented a general outline of the issue uh, in reading it into the record, but I think it's very important that you all have a better understanding of the facts that have led us to, to the point um, that we are, uh, given the complaint that was issued. Uh, early last year, the city issued an RFP for a design-build contract for the Center of Acting, Active Aging, as you all know, what we're here to consider this evening. Uh, Seawood responded last March uh, their submittal included a list of several campaign contributions to city commissioners, which is required in the RFP application, as well as under uh, sections of the city code. Uh, 
based on its initial submittal package, the evaluation committee selected Seawood as one of three responsive bidders that moved into the second phase of the RFP process. Seawood uh, uh, was ultimately selected, as you know, in the item that we're here to consider this evening uh, as the top responding and qualified bidder as your backup reflects by more than 100 points and over half a million dollars lower than the second rank qualified responder. It wasn't until the allegations were submitted last week, and, and interestingly enough, it was Anthony mentioned last Monday, it was actually, I believe, last Wednesday afternoon that Betty Massey received a call from someone with the new Pelican advising of this issue. Uh, up until that point last Wednesday, uh, the fact that a, a single contribution was left off of all of the others that were included within the application uh, was unknown to Seawood Builders. Seawood went back and checked their files and there was a, an unfortunate clerical error that occurred when they were listing the RFP responses. There were three contributions noted. There was one, unfortunately, that was left off. There were contributions from Ed and Betty Massey individually and a contribution from Seawood both to uh, a particular commissioner's campaign, one was disclosed, one was not. And so I, I don't think there's anything here that in any way was intentional um, as it relates to the background facts associated with this issue. I think the issue that you all are faced with this evening is whether this clerical oversight in failing to list one out of four campaign contributions is what your code calls a minor irregularity, I'll, I'll get into more detail in just a moment, uh, versus something that's more egregious uh, and a finding that C would actually attempt to properly influence the outcome of the RFP process. I think there's a, a distinction between those two things that's instrumental in the decision that you're going to make this evening. Finds a minor irregularity, I'm going to read from it as a variation from the competitive solicitation which does not affect the proposed price or give the offerer an advantage or benefit not enjoyed by other offerers or does not adversely affect the fundamental fairness of the competitive solicitation process. That's the specific definition in your code. Based on the facts here, none of those circumstances exist. There's no inherent unfairness. There's no advantage gained. It doesn't affect the scoring at all as it relates to this process a minor irregularity in the application. Alternatively, your code um, also addresses ethics violations. You have an ethics ordinance. It talks about impropriety, impropriety in the procurement process. It talks about things like conflicts of interest, kickbacks, payments of gratuity, offers of employment, violations of the cone of silence, and importantly, or any other improper attempt to influence the outcome of a procurement. None of those circumstances exist here either. So at the end of the day, there's really no dispute that Seawood listed several campaign contributions in its application for the RFP. Again, no one's denying that one of those contributions, so there should have been a fourth, was not listed in the RFP application. Um, importantly, that contribution was reported as required by law in a campaign treasurer's report, is a matter of public record. Seawood's not trying to hide something here. It's there, it's in the clerk's office, it's, it, it's in other places as it relates to this application. It was not listed in this application. Um, therefore, there's really no improper action by Seawood, certainly nothing intentional to deceive or influence the outcome of this process. So, it's our position that the missing information really can only be viewed as what your code defines as a minor irregularity, that there's a section in your procurement code, 138-130, that gives the city commission full discretion to waive minor irregularities. The argument I wanted to make tonight, that's the point that I wanted to, to make to the commission. I'd like to just make one other comment, if I can, as it relates to Seawood uh, and Ed and Betty Massey individually. Um, I think it's important that you understand a little bit of their background. Uh, I'm sure that the city's aware. Betty and Ed Massey have lived in the city of Deerfield Beach for more than 35 years. Their company, Seawood Builders, 
who we're talking about here this evening has been headquartered in the city of Deerfield Beach for essentially the same amount of time. I'm sure you know they've dedicated countless hours of their time to ensure that Deerfield is a thriving and success, successful community for businesses and individuals alike. Um, they're upsetting members of the community and it's an absolute shame that they've been subjected to ridicule and slanderous comments by a select few citizens within the city of Deerfield Beach. Considering some of the allegations being made about Seawood, I think it's very relevant and telling that the city committee noticed that Seawood... Mr. Backman, uh, would you like another minute? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Mayor. I'm, I'm, I'm finishing up right now. The last point I wanted to make was that I think it's very important that in the 35 years that Seawood has been in the city of Deerfield Beach, that they have never been selected as a general contractor on a city contract. This is the first time that they would be awarded such an opportunity to work as a general count contractor for the city of Deerfield Beach. With that said, I know that Betty Massey uh, from Seawood, my client, I think she has her hand up from what I can see here, and I think that she'd like to read a statement uh, to the commission as well. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, Ms. Massey? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Um, Mayor Gans, Vice Mayor Drosky, Commissioner Parnez, Commissioner Preston, and Commissioner Hudak, um, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak to this matter. My name is Betty Massey. I live at 1617 Southeast 6th Street, Deerfield Beach. My husband and I have lived and worked in Deerfield Beach for 35 years. Our company, Seawood Builders, has been headquartered in Deerfield Beach for about the same amount of time. Tonight, the vote was supposed to be a simple consent agenda item. There would presumably have been little or no discussion as Seawood was ranked number one by over 100 points, and as part of that ranking, offered a bid $550,000 less than the number two ranked firm. There would have not been much to talk about tonight other than the Center for Active Aging being a great project for the city with a highly regarded local contractor doing the work. I never imagined that a single search on my accounting database, which provided the wrong answer, would be a defining moment leading to a discussion about me, my husband, and our company's moral character. It would never occur to me that a mistake searching for a name that yielded, quote, no results would come to be considered an ethics violation. It's unfathomable to me now to think that our company may be disqualified from proceeding with an important project because of a clerical error that I personally made, what a harsh, disproportionate punishment for an error. Seawood did disclose campaign contributions. Seawood failed to list one contribution due to an oversight. This minor irregularity in the submission of our proposal had no bearing on the outcome of the ranking and provided no unfair advantage to Seawood over the other offerers. Had Seawood listed an additional $500 campaign contribution, it would not have had changed the outcome of the scoring or the recommendation to proceed with us. The commission has broad discretion to label this for what it is, a minor irregularity, and to acknowledge that this minor irregularity does not rise to the level of a moral violation. There was no malintent. There was nothing nefarious. There was no reason to hide a single contribution. But what there is, is a handful of people in our community that take great pride and even joy in disrupting the business of our city. They celebrate the defeat of those that support our community and help the city prosper. They would be pleased to know that they destroyed an opportunity for Seawood and all its team members to work with the city on a project they disdain. They are already bragging on social media and claiming victory for to torpedoing this project as they continue to slander me, my company, and many other upstanding citizens of our community, including all of you, our city leaders. No matter what decision you make today, they will protest and encourage backlash. What we need to do is the right thing, not the thing that they prefer. <laughs> Those of you that know me know how much I love Deerfield Beach. 
my husband, Ed, and I, and our company, Seawood Builders, intend to be here for the long haul, always working to make the community we live, work, and play in the best it can be. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Massey. Do we have anyone from the public to speak? Not seeing any hands raised. Is there anything else come in through the email, uh, Ms. Gilliard? One moment. No, sir. Okay. I'm going to close it to the public. Uh, we have Vice Mayor Parnas, uh, Commissioner Preston, and then Commissioner Hudak. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, go right ahead, Vice Mayor. Okay, number one, I did not receive a contribution from Betty Massey or Seawood Builders. And what I'm going to say has no reflect on anybody that did. I think it's imperative of us to sometimes forgive a minor mistake. And I'll tell you why. We have two agencies that break their back to bring business to Deerfield. It's not that they tried to hide something. Yes, it's a violation. And yes, we could throw the bid out. And yes, we could say, all right, throw them all out and let's start over. Why? For a minor mistake? It is a mistake. They, li they did not list a second contribution to an individual candidate. I don't think we want to set the kind of record that we are so stickless and unfriendly to businesses that have been here for years that we will discourage other businesses from even bothering to do business with us. This is not a major violation. This is not an attempt to deceive the city. This is not an attempt to hide a second contribution to an individual candidate. It's a clerical error. My opinion, we go ahead with the contract. We award it. They bid saving us a half a million dollars. Forgetting the price even, they were 100 points above anybody else. They are good corporate neighbors to the city of Deerfield. I don't think we should punish them. That's what I have to say. Thank you, Vice Mayor Parnas. Uh, Commissioner Preston. Hear me. Yes, sir, we can hear you. And we got video. Okay, good. Finally. Um, this is a really tough situation. Um, when you look at all of its components. And I don't think anybody would argue that the Masseys have been a, a very positive experience for the city of Deerfield Beach. They have been, that's my feeling. Um, but, but I also will say we have the responsibility to at least ask what is the right thing to do under these circumstances? What is that right thing? And we have to consider that because, you know, we could say that there is um, nothing nefarious here. However, um, what is this appearance to people that live in our city that believe in uh, our government? What is the right thing to do? And we must ask that question. We owe it not only to uh, the oath that we took, but we owe it to our residents to look at things uh, of this nature. And when something happens like this, um, you know, we have to say, what is the right thing to do? We have a process that is in place already that we have three different companies. And if something happens with number one, we have two others that we, that we should consider so that the process could consistently 
uh, move along. And we must uh, look at it before we say start over. See, if we start over, what we're saying that the process that we have in place already to deal with something of this magnitude, that we're going to bypass that and start the process over. And in appearance, though, uh, it, to others, it would be so that you could actually get the results that you want to get, even though that may not be the case. And so I'm just saying that, you know, in this, in this um, unfortunate set of circumstances, we must ask some question. What is our responsibility right now? What is, what is that responsibility? What is the right thing to do? It's our responsibility, the best that we can, to do the right thing. But what is that right thing, the right thing? Is it to award the contract? Is it to start over? Or is it to award the next person or the next company in line? We need to deal with that. We need to deal with that. And um, it's unfortunate and it's very challenging, but there, as I said, we, we must also think of our residents. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, Commissioner Drosky, excuse me, Commissioner Hudak, my apologies. That's quite all right. Um, I think we've all done a lot of research on this subject. And, and the first point I wanna make is, is by just awarding the contract to the number two bidder, we're costing the taxpayers $500,000. And so therefore, I, I don't believe that that is the, um, the, the proper course of action. Uh, the, the first question I had with regards to this situation is, uh, the two other applicants, have we received any correspondence from them claiming that they were um, uh, taken advantage of or not given a, 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 a fair opportunity? Um, if I have been told that we have not received any correspondence from them, is that still accurate? Mr. Santucci. Uh, Commissioner, to the best of my knowledge, we have not received any correspondence from the other two uh, proposers on the project. Okay, because those are the individuals who are most adversely affected with regards to this situation. And they have not seen fit to, to bring any injustice um, claims forward. The next thing we, we, I, I'm personally looking at is the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law. You know, why was this put in place? Was there an intent to deceive? If the answer is yes, then we have to follow a path. If the answer is no, and this is just a clerical error, error then I recommend we follow another path. So those are kind of the, the thought process that I have going on, the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law. Was there an intent to deceive? Were, by not disclosing this, con this campaign contribution, did Seawood Builders receive um, a, an unfair advantage? Uh, and, and I don't see that that is the case. I don't know of any corporation that would intentionally hide a $500 campaign contribution in order to lose a potential $11.5 million bid. So those are kind of the things that I'm looking at. Um, I, I have received a memo from our city manager, and uh, I'm sorry, from our city attorney. And so um, I would really like him to, to give us uh, a brief synopsis with regards to um, this being an ethical violation versus this being a critical error. I, I have read your memo, but I think it's important that we all hear that uh, to determine, you know, why these things were put into place in the first place, uh, and to determine if this does fall under an ethical violation or 
a clerical error. Thank you. If you want to go uh, comment on that first before we move on to Commissioner Drowski. I think, Mayor, if we could um, move on to the comments from Commissioner Drosky before the city attorney responds. Okay. Commissioner Drosky. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my comments are going to tie into the city attorney's memo, actually. But um, the city attorney gave us a memo which outlines four options how to handle this situation tonight. Um, what is not an option is to have the city manager negotiate uh, the number one price with the number two bidder. So we can't go to the number two bidder and say, hey, can you do this for the number one price? That is not an option under our code. Um, what, our op what the options are that were outlined to us are one, to approve the recommendation of the evaluation committee, two, to reject all of the bids, Three, for the city commission to re-rank the proposals. And number four, to send uh, this back to the evaluation committee uh, for further review. So in my opinion, in going through those proposals, uh, number one, to approve the recommendation. Um, I would not be in favor of that recommendation and, and here's why. Uh, we have our code written for a particular reason. We have the strongest ethics code in all of Broward County for a reason. Deerfield Beach at one point in time had three fifths of its commission removed by the governor for certain acts of malfeasance. Uh, and those of us that were around during those days remember that and we remember the turmoil uh, and we remember why the ethics code was written as strong as it was. Um, and I actually ran on a, a platform of strong you know, ethics and bringing decorum back to our dais here in the city of Deerfield Beach. And I'm going to adhere to that principle. Um, so just approving the recommendation while overlooking um, a violation, be it minimal or not. And, and, and I don't think it was intentional by any stretch of the imagination, but it's something uh, that I cannot overlook. So option one to approve, um, I would not be in favor of. Option number three is to send, uh, excuse me, for the city commission to re-rank the proposals. Um, that one also does not work for me. And I will tell you why, because I sat on the audit committee um, when we were picking the city auditor and the amount of information that is involved in these selections is extremely voluminous. I mean, you will print out reams and reams and reams of paper that are available in the portal that is submitted as part of these proposals. Uh, for the commission to sit here on the fly um, to re-rank with information that we have not reviewed in any particular detail um, to me is not fair to any of the applicants. And I think we do it injustice to the process. So I would not be interested in option number three either. Option number four is to send it back to the audit committee. Um, I, I could be talked in, into that tonight. Um, I'm not really sure what that accomplishes, to be honest with you. Those are individuals that they're not ethics violation experts. Um, they're not in tune to the politics and the social media of, of Deerfield Beach. These are hardworking men and women that were asked to take a lot of information, uh, review it, and come up with a, a ranking. And to send it back to them, I, I'm not sure what that would do except have the, uh, the same result. Uh, I, I see them shrugging their shoulders and saying, what do we do with this ethics violation? We ranked this. We came up with a point system. And we're gonna to stick to that point system. So I think from the appearance of, of optics and getting the same result, um, you know, number four is an option, but I don't know how strong of an option it is to be with you. Um, but it's, it's, it's something that I could be convinced if someone wants to make that argument. Um, number two, the number two um, recommendation was to reject all of the bids. Um, I admit that there is, uh, that option also, um, 
is not high on my list because there are two applicants that filled everything out correctly uh, and, and they did everything that they were supposed to and they necessarily shouldn't be penalized as part of this, this process. Um, however, it does give an opportunity to, to uh, revisit this. Like I said, you can't go from number one to number two uh, without spending an extra $533,426.33. Uh, I'm not interested in spending an extra half million dollars to, to make a point either. Um, so if we were to send this to have the, the basically the bids redone again, um, there's no guarantee that the number one applicant would be number one again. Uh, in addition to that, there may be more applicants than the three. I, if you open it up, you would have potentially more applicants than the three that we have now. For example, the Tigner Center, uh, which request for proposals, uh, qualifications rather, excuse me, just closed in March. Uh, we have six bidders for the Tigner Center. So we have double the amount of potential bidders. And with the economy that is in the state right now, there are potential private firms that may want to do government work because it's very hard to get private work at this time. So they may want to, to bid on that. Um, but there's no guarantee there'll be additional bidders. There's no guarantee that the number one bidder will be the number one bidder the next time around. So I don't really see any merit in options one and three that were presented to us. Uh, and options two and four, I think, are the ones that we should discuss tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, do we want to... Uh, Vice Mayor Parnas, I know you've already spoken once, but if we can have Mr. Soroka comment. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And sorry, my computer dropped off for a minute. Had to get a battery. Um, Madam Clerk, if you can put up the document that I sent you earlier and share that screen. So these are excerpts from our city code. And before I start, I just want to say that, um, you know, I. I received the information and I reviewed uh, the documents that I mentioned uh, in my memo. Um, I didn't find any evidence of deceit or intentional uh, misconduct by anybody. Um, but what, was I, what I was asked to do was to give direction to the commission based on the letter that was provided and the letter of the law and the city code. And that's what I'm bound by and that's what I give my opinion based on. So, the, the campaign disclosure requirement that's at issue here is in section 25052A uh, specifically, and you can see where I have it bolded there. And essentially it requires uh, applicants who submit proposals, or uh, proposers who submit proposals in response to competitive solicitations to include with their proposal a listing of all campaign contributions to sitting commissioners in the past four years, as well as contributions, in this case, it was an LLC, so it would be of any of the individual members of the LLC. So it's my opinion, based on reviewing the evidence, that uh, for a particular contribution to the mayor, they should have disclosed two payments instead of one. I think they have not acknowledged that, that it was a clerical uh, error. Uh, and so, so what happens? They disclosed one instead of two. Well, Section F, right below that, that I also have bolded that you see there, says... Fair to disclose in compliance with this section shall be a violation of this ethics code and shall be grounds for city commission to void or rescind any approval or contract. So regardless of whether it was intentional or not, as you see in the code, there's no distinction between intention or gravity or anything like that. You see what I saw, uh, but F tells us that it's a violation of the code. So what happens when it's a violation of the code? Well, 2505F says, that failure to disclose shall be grounds for the city commission to void or rescind any approval or contract. And if that's the only language that we had in the code that addressed the circumstance where there's a code violation, I would agree that it's grounds. Doesn't mean, doesn't say you shall rescind or, or void, but we have additional code provisions. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you can scroll down to the second page. So I'm gonna to skip to 38.141 and I'll come back to 127 in, in a second. So 38.141 says ethics and procurement, subsection two says, the city shall not execute a contract if there has been a violation of this section, which I don't believe it was of this section, any, co any ethics provision of your procurement solicitation 
or any local, state, or federal law. Uh, local law includes the city go code, by the way. And then it says including, but not limited to, and it specifies the list of things. Uh, I would agree with um, Attorney Bachman in terms of that, what happened here or what, or what appears to have happened here. And I think ultimately it's the city commission's determination to believe whether it was the violation of the section I just pointed out uh, is not A through F. Um, and, and it may not rise to the level of that and it may not be egregious, but, but again, I am limited to what's in the code and what's the reasonable interpretation. And as you see there, it says the city shall not execute a contract if there has been a violation of any ethics provision of a procurement solicitation or any local law, including but not limited to. So that's why I provided uh, you know, the memo uh, and I wrote it the way I did. And I gave you the four options and where the four options in the memo come from are in the code provision just above that. Maybe scroll up just a, just a hair, if you will, uh, Madam Clerk. But basically that is the 38127 is the competitive solicitation uh, code provision in your code, section 4E speaks to what happens after the committee uh, makes their evaluation recommendation. And it starts off and says it shall be reported to the city commission. And then it goes on to speak to what the city commission's options are. So the options laid out for you, one through four, and I'll speak about why it says one through three, and I have four in my memo in a minute, uh, come right from this code provision. Number four is the last sentence there where it says the city commission reserves the right to re-rank in accordance with 38130. So that's my number four. Uh, in my memo. So those are the four options that you would have, uh, you know, notwithstanding if there was any type of violation like we're talking about today. So because we did have this disclosure issue, uh, I think one of the issues that's being discussed is can we really still do one uh, under there and, and approve the ranking and authorize negotiation of a contract with the top ranked firm. And that's where 38141-2 comes in for me. And so that's why I gave the opinion that I did, that if ultimately the commission determines that there's been a violation of 255, the prior section on page one of the document that we're looking at, that it's my opinion that you should not enter into a contract per 38-141 sub two. So I, I hope that clarifies things. And of course, I still remain available to answer any questions that you may have. I'm going to, uh, and it, the public to be heard is closed at this point. I'll be closing that. Um, Commissioner Parnas, or excuse me, Vice Mayor Parnas, my apologies. My question to you, Anthony, uh, City Attorney, is why do we have four choices? If the law is the law, why do we have four options? Where did the four options come from? And what jeopardy do we have if we pick any one of the four? Okay. So the four options come from that code section that I cited. I don't know if Madam Clerk may have to put it up again. That speak to in your code, what happens after the committee makes a recommendation? It gets reported to the commission and then the code lays out four options that happen thereafter. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, and then the last section, of, excuse me, the last sentence basically provides you with your fourth, fourth option. The commission ability to re-rank. The commission ability to re-rank, by the way, if you go to 38130, requires you to review all of the documents uh, that were submitted in, in response to the procurement. Basically, you, you, you almost de facto take the position of the selection committee and go through that whole um, process. So those are where the four options come from, uh, Commissioner. The reason, the, you know, the issue with option one is if you find that they violated uh, the prior section of the code that I showed you, 2505, <clears throat> there's an issue, you know, in my opinion, with 38141 uh, sub 2. So if they violated 25052 2A, let's say, right, F tells you if they didn't do what was in A, F tells you it's a violation. And so then you have a violation of the city code. And then, you know, that's where, in my opinion, 2, 2 uh, section, excuse me, if we go down 38-141 sub 2 comes into play. Well, in 141, I don't see anything where we gain anything. Any city employees to realize personal gain. I, I lost the first part of your 
Um, Any attempt by there. city employees to realize personal gain by conduct, conduct inconsistent with proper discharge of their duties is a breach of public trust. Yes, yeah, subsection two, Commissioner, Vice Mayor. Okay, me. the city shall not execute a contract if there's been a violation of this section. Well, then if we cannot award the contract, which is one of the options we do have, am I correct? Under Is the code, you have the ability to approve a ranking of the selection committee. However, it's my opinion that if there is a violation of the disclosure requirement that we just went over, that if you find that that was a, that that they violated by not disclosing the second campaign contribution, that thirty eight one forty one says you can't execute a contract if there's been a violation of the city code. So there would be a conflict with, in my opinion, with option one for you. Okay, then the only other answer that I, I could recommend would be to start from scratch. I cannot see kicking out without an opportunity to correct the mistake, which a new bid would, would give us and save a half a million dollars over the next bidder kicking them out and just spending an extra half a million dollars to me isn't feasible or warranted. So if you need a motion on that, I'll be happy to make it. Uh, we have, um, uh, we have Commissioner Hudak who wants to comment. I do. Um, if, if we can put the memo up again on page one and Anthony, I, I noticed that the language in there uses the word shall as opposed to the word must. Talk a little bit about that. Um, Commissioner, just so we make sure we're talking about the same thing, which code section are you uh, referring to? Um, 255, yes, 2505 yes. subsection yes. two? Yes. Yeah, no, in one. It says no, shall. In subsection two. Yeah. Right. So it says in any applicant, and I'm paraphrasing here because I'm yeah. reading the top part, shall with their application, proposal or bid include a listing. Uh, shall uh, being um, mandatory. No, no. Uh, section F. Okay. So well, subsection F. In compliance with the section shall be a violation of the Exodus Code and shall be grounds for the City Commission to void or rescind any approval or contract. Right, so it's my opinion subsection F says if there was a violation of 2A or B or C or D for that matter, but right. the issue today is 2A, it's saying that it shall be an ethics code violation, right, Mand mandatory and shall be grounds for the city commission to void or rescind any approval or contract. And frankly, if all we had was this section, and that second lang part of the language that I just read, shall be grounds, right. well, that's potentially optional. In other words, there are grounds that you could use to void it, but you don't have to, right? And, th right. and that would be my opinion, and you'd have the ability uh, potentially to waive it. But then when you get to the other section that I referenced, 38-141 sub two, it says if there's a city code violation or any local law violation, which includes the city code or any ethics provision of a procurement solicitation, the city shall not execute a contract. So, oh, and, and I think the difference of opinion with, with my colleague, Mr. Bachman, sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, uh, Mr. Hudak is, is I think, no, 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 you know, in their okay. opinion that um, they think 38-141, you know, is not applicable. Um, so do we have to vote first as a commission if we believe this is an ethical violation? You is have a number of options. You, you don't necessarily have to determine that okay. unless you're going to go, depending on which option you pick. Um, I mean, if, if we you, determine that, then option one is off the chart, is, is, off, uh, is, is not an option. That's my opinion, yes. If you determine they violated 2A, it, it's my opinion that you should not enter into a contract with them based on the provision I just showed you. And I'm just reading the black letter of the law. Of the law. No, I, I got you, sir. And I, I do appreciate it. I, you know, I always appreciate your advice, sir. Really do. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and comment on this and considering that I am the candidate or the person who the donation was made to and the omission was made. Um, I think it's, um, you know, I, I think it's only right for me to talk about that and, and share my opinion on this. First off, um, yeah, I, I was here way back in 2008, 2009. Um, but we had these issues that uh, Commissioner Drosky brought up with three members of the Deerfield Beach City Commission being removed from office by the governor. Ironically, one of those people that were removed by um, office by the governor is one of the, uh, the people that are making all these aspersions to the character of the Masseys was supported in the last mayoral election to try to run for office again here in the city of Deerfield Beach. So let's not pretend this is about ethics or morals or anything like that. The truth of the matter is, though, a mistake was made. This was an honest mistake. There is no way that you can tell me um, that this was anything but that. Knowing the characters of the Masseys, um, that is exactly what happened. This omission was simply that, an omission. But the rules are the rules for a reason. Um, we had situations in the past in which the ethics in Deerfield Beach were a joke. And uh, there was too many things that were going on that needed to be changed. That's why I supported this when I ran for election 11 years ago. Um, and much the opposition of the people who were sitting in office at the time. And even as we revised this, and we, re we revised this back in 2016. So this is a technicality in many ways, a technicality. But that technicality results, in my opinion, in a violation of our ethics code. Was it unethical? No, this is an error and an omission, but that doesn't mean it's not a violation of what our code is. So um, I, I would have a hard time moving forward with this and just rejecting the fact that this is not a violation. Um, with that said, with the options that we have, approving it because of that, I, I don't feel we can't approve it and move forward with it. Um, to re-rank and go back is the right thing to do. But where is, where is that going to get us? In the end, what we have to do is in the, the rules were written to protect the citizens and to do what's in the best interest of the citizen. Would it be in the best interest of the citizens of Deerfield Beach and our taxpayers if we were to go ahead and throw out five hundred and almost $50,000 on the technicality? Um, going back to re-rank, we have three excellent firms that have come forward. They've come forward in good faith They've done exactly what they were supposed to do. One of them, in particular, has been attacked from the very beginning by certain people simply for one reason, because they supported a candidate they didn't like, in particular me, and actually some of the others that sit on this board. But that's the reason they have been targeted. They've been targeted from the very beginning. What they've had to go through in the public by these bullies on the internet is completely unacceptable. But that needs to be separated from what the issue we're arguing about here. What's in the best interest of our taxpayers? I believe that if we send it back to the re-ranking, just because of the way the scores went, that the second ranked firm will probably still come out as the second ranked firm if they're choosing between the two firms. That being said, that second ranked firm is a, a half a mil, over a half a million dollars off from what the bid is. That is gonna be hard to get them to make up. And let's say they come close. Let's say they go to bring it to a quarter of a million dollars. Is that worth it to the taxpayers simply over this minor omission that was there? That yes, technically breaks our rules, but um, I don't think the taxpayer would be punished simply because of that. Certainly this is a mistake. Um, and, and I feel that what, what, what should be considered in looking at this is that we go out and we, put, we start this process over. Put him back, and this was even suggested suggested by <clears throat> Mr. Sullivan, who's the one who pointed this out. And it was a good catch by him, despite the fact that he is one of the people who have made some of the disparaging comments um, in some way about me and others, and suggesting in, in, in a roundabout way that there's a various plan going on here, which is not the case. It was a good catch by him, and that was the right thing to do. But it's ironic that the same individual went out, was unhappy when three, only three people bid, went out and asked a contractor out there why they didn't bid on it. And that same contractor donated my campaign, actually donated $1,000 to my campaign. 
If the Masseys had donated 1,000 instead of 500, it would have been on the campaign report. We wouldn't be here right now. It's simply a technicality, but it does violate what our rules are. And I have to stand by the rules. That's the right thing to do. I think putting this out to re-rank or, or, or starting this process over and beginning it again is the right thing to do. It, it will, I'm hopeful, attract more people and more competition is good for our taxpayers. To punish the taxpayers on this, uh, to me, is the wrong thing to do. Uh, Mr. Preston, you brought up what is the right thing to do, what we should do. We should follow our rules and abide by it, but we should in the end do what's in the best interest of the taxpayer. Um, so, so I hear you and I think, I think that's a really good point. Um, I'm going to go back to, to, to what this is really about in many ways. This character, we need to stick by our rules and we need to follow that. But there are certain things that need to stop here in this city. It's this character assassination by these internet bullies online that have gone after the masses for the simple crime of supporting candidates that they want to. This is a firm. This is exactly what you want in the city of Deerfield Beach. This is what people have asked us for. Why are you letting local firms bid on projects? Well, we made our rules set up that where that is part of the ranking process for your local firm. This is a longstanding, outstanding firm in our, in our uh, city. These are people who are the biggest cheerleaders for the city of Deerfield Beach there are. They do outstanding work, do nothing but donate their time, while many, they volunteer countless hours while some of these people that are attacking them, the only thing they ever volunteer is their opinion. It's not right. Um, and their crime has been that they supported a candidate that these people didn't like. So they have gone on in every which way they can. These are people that have supported candidates and, in, and they talk about it being about integrity. They talk about transparency. They support candidates that hide microphones under tables to record conversations without people knowing it. They support people, uh, candidates, and try to get them to run who have been removed from office. They ignore those indiscretions by the people that were previously here. And the reason we have these ethics, simply because they don't like me or any of the other ones sitting up here. I'm not going to sit here and punish the taxpayers of Deerfield Beach um, for that. And they shouldn't be. But I think this character assassination, assassination is completely wrong. Say what you want about me, but the fact that they have attacked not only the Masseys, Ed and Betty Massey personally, and some of the disgusting comments that they have made, they have attacked the people that are our staff that are on this board that know nothing about them. They have no part of this. They have suggested I've committed a crime. They suggested by the mere fact that they donated to my campaign, that there's something nefarious going on. People donate to campaigns. It doesn't buy them anything. It is not like it has been hidden. If you look at my campaign form, the donations from the Masseys are right there in a row. They're not buried, they're not hidden. They put down that they donated to my campaign. They certainly were not trying to hide that. They just simply missed one. And on, contrary to the lies being spread by these people, they have not put down the maximum amount. They could have doubled that on each one of those donations, but they didn't. This is not about them trying to hide something. They did nothing wrong except make a clerical error. But that clerical error does, error does break the rules. But what is going on with them has nothing to do with tax or anything else except the petty attacks and vicious attacks. And while they're encouraging other people to go out and take legal action, I will tell you this. You can accuse me of a crime all you want. You have no proof. Your opinion is not a fact. I challenge you to go ahead and file a complaint. Do like you've done over and over again. You filed complaints, you throw enough against the wall to try to get something to stick. It has never worked because it's never factual. Your opinion are not facts. You wanna come at me, I'm a public figure, you can. Your character assassination of citizens in this city simply because they support candidates you don't like is wrong. And I hope they take action on that to prevent this because it is not something that should be happening in the city of Deerfield Beach. And it's a small, very minor group of people that are doing this, but it's disgusting and it should stop. With that being said, I believe that we should put these bids, we, we should take this process that we have right now, put all of this back out to bid, 
Uh, we don't have to go for RFQ necessarily. I think we can just go for an RFP. But if we have to go for RFQ, that's fine. If that brings in more firms that, that bring us competition, that's a good thing. But I don't think the taxpayers should be punished for something like this. Certainly, all the firms that have been involved in this process are going to suffer from this clerical error. But I don't think the taxpayers should suffer from this. And that's exactly what would happen to feed the egos of people who really don't care about whether this happens or not. They've actually bashed this project. They've said that there's only 40 people to participate in that we shouldn't be doing this. The Act Center for Active Aging is one of the most outstanding uh, facilities we have and programs and staff that we have in the city of Deerfield Beach. It is a crown jewel in this city. It has been neglected for decades and it's time for us to go ahead and renovate that and bring that up. We have over 200 participants daily in our programs for the Center for Active Aging, despite what others might say, because they simply don't know what they're talking about. This is the right project. It's right for the city of Deerfield Beach. It is us. It's our turn to, to renovate the facilities that we have in our city. We have the right to do that. It's the right thing to do. And it's right for the taxpayer for us to go back out to bid on this. Uh, we have Vice Mayor Parnas. Yes, I'd like to make a motion. And my motion would be to return the bids and go ahead and start over. Vice Mayor, if I may, or Mr. Mayor, if I may be recognized, um, just for the technical term, if, if you're going with that option, Vice Mayor, it would be to reject all proposals and direct staff to yes. um, issue a new solicitation for the, the services. That's my motion. Okay, we have a motion from uh, Vice Mayor Parnas to, re to um, reject all proposals. And direct staff to resolicit. And direct staff to resolicit. Thank you. I'll stop in that. Uh, Commissioner Drosky, sorry, you had your hand up, and then Commissioner Preston. Well, I have a question about the motion. Does the motion, um, if adopted, does that allow for bidders that were not involved in the process before? City Attorney. Um, as I understood it, it was to reject all proposals and to restart. Um, so unless the vice mayor has a con condition to add on top of that, it sounds like it would be to issue a new solicitation and open it up. Um, no, I don't because I feel as further, the mayor, mayor has stated, that's why I understand the more it. people that bid, the more competition, the better price and saving money for the citizens of Deerfield. Vice Mayor Parnes, I'm going to ask you to pause for a moment. Mr. Stork, if you finish your statement, then you can say what you'd like, Mr. Parnes, or, or Vice Mayor Parnes, on that afterward. I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe I misunderstood that. Yeah, uh, Vice Mayor, you interrupted Mr. Soroka. So if you could just. Oh, pause. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt Anthony. Mr. Okay. Soroka, please continue. No, no problem at all. I know this technology is a little, a little tough. Um, so my understanding was you wanted to reject all proposals and issue a new solicitation. That was your motion. Um, Commissioner Drosky is asking whether that would be opening it up to, to all bidders. Uh, that's yes. what I understood because you didn't put any conditions on it. Um, you know, for example, if you wanted to just reject the RFP versus the RFQ. Uh, so that's how I understood it. But, but ultimately, you, you, you may want to clarify, uh, Vice Mayor, is that what your intent was? to reject all proposals and issue a new solicitation that, that any firm what, what, that's qualified could respond what to? What choice do we have consider? just to send it out to the three again? Or do we open it up to everybody? Okay. Is that what you're asking us to do? So yes. I'm, what I'm asking is what, what option do I have on this motion? Is it to open the bid and start over for everybody that wants the bid? Or do we send it out and restrict it to the three that already bid? I'm asking the city attorney to clarify that. Well, well you do have some options. Probably if those are the two options, uh, and based on the comments that I was hearing uh, about potentially permitting CWIT to participate in that process as well, based on the violation, and that it could be potentially open from to others, um, it sounded like the direction was to reject all proposals and open it up to everybody. 
Um, Correct. Yeah. That's my motion. That is I think the that's what your intent was, but you can clarify if you'd like, Vice Mayor. That, that's what he's saying his motion was. Does that answer your question, Commissioner Drosky? It does. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Preston. I have a problem with a process that we have in place that you rank the three top companies and now we're saying that the other two um, would have to start over and be a part of the process. So why do we have a system or a process in place by which the people who are on that, we're down to three, that uh, they are not really considered. Um, you know, uh, my thing is, is that I agree with my colleagues when you say you don't want to have the, uh, the residents or our constituencies uh, being handed a bill um, for over $500,000. But also, if you've got a process in place, how do you just abandon that and not look into it, not challenge it, not see if there is um, ways that you can um, move forward without uh, starting it all over to bid again. Uh, those people went through the process. They did everything that was asked of them. And now we get to a point where there is some difficulty in how we deal with this situation. Um, so we, we, we don't like uh, how convoluted this is. So we decide that we're just going to push them to the side. I just think that's unfair. We have a system that's in place. There's a process, and they're not being considered in this process at all. Well, in my opinion on that, uh, Commissioner Preston, is I think it's unfair to turn around to them because they're the second-ranked firm and start negotiating a price and say, look, we had a 500, over $500,000 separating you in the number one person and a hundred points, mind you, in the process, we want you to see if you can get that price closer uh, to that. That's asking someone to come up with an extra half million dollars. If they could have cut that from this project, they probably would have. Um, I think it's unfair to them to try to do that at this point. And, and what happens if they don't meet that price that they go to the next, we go down to number three in our list. I, I hear you. And I think it's unfortunate for all involved. But I think in the end, I don't want to punish the tax. I'd rather inconvenience the people that have been in this process. I'd rather inconvenience them than actually shortchange the public on this. I think that's, that would be the wrong thing to do. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Santucci. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to include that. Um, I just wanted to include that in this, uh, if to, to do this uh, or to reject all bids and then go back out, um, that the there is the option to, to just do the RFP and not the, the two-step RFQ and RFP process. Frankly, the reason why we did the RFQ uh, first and then the RFP um, was because at the time of releasing the RFQ, we did not have the complete design criteria package completed. So we were able to save ourselves a little bit of time during that process by getting the pre-qualification completed while the design criteria package was being finalized. Um, by the time the RFQ was approved by the city commission, the design criteria package and the RFP were ready to go out at that point in time. So we could, we could feasibly um, be a little bit, a lot quicker uh, in the RFP process uh, if that's the decision of the commission. Okay. Mr. Uh, Preston? Mayor, uh, I actually agree with you. Um, you want our residents not to be shortchanged, but I also feel that in a sense they are being shortchanged when you, this, we being the spokesman for our residents, have a system in place of which we have found an issue with it, but we don't really address it other than to say that we're gonna start the process over. We don't really know what they might be able to do. Uh, as you said, um, they probably would have, um, you know, come up with that price in the beginning if they could have. Um, 
But if I were a part of that and that I made the top three, um, I would like to know that the system that you had in place defended me or at least allowed me to have a voice, though my voice actually is silent. The only way that they're speaking is just simply by a price uh, that, they, that, that they quoted. So um, we, have a, we have a system in place to bypass it, to not address it, to talk about it, to, you know, what, what uh, I'd like to know from the city attorney, what leverage that we have in this situation in regard to the other remaining companies. What can we do? I think you may be asking, like, is it possible if they can reduce their price? Is that yes. what you're, when you say leverage, is that what you're referring to? Yes. To close the gap on the 550000 Yes. Yeah, it's happened before. Um, you know, I, I would never recommend and probably be prohibited that, you know, the price goes up after the proposals are submitted, but it has happened in contract negotiations where there have been, you know, reductions. I, I don't know, um, you know, in this case, whether the second rank firm um, can do that, would be willing to do that. I have no indication of that. I, I can't speak to that. Um, it's possible that they would reduce their price. Mr. Mayor. Uh, and I would say, I'm sorry, Commissioner. Go, go ahead, uh, uh, Mr. Soroka, I'm sorry. Yeah, and they would, if, if the motion that was seconded is passed, they would certainly have the opportunity to submit a proposal as part of that solicitation and lower their price as well. Okay. Uh, if I could say some of that, we talked about that they made the top three. There were only three bidders, so it wasn't hard to make the top three when there's only three people that came forward on this contract. Uh, but I understand your point. I'm not, I'm just pointing that out. Um, and I'm not comfortable with saying what leverage do we have? I think that's what's unfair. That would be unfair to these uh, other uh, bidders on this project is trying to leverage them and leverage that price and forcing them into something that they might not be comfortable with. Um, uh, look, I believe, I understand what you're saying as far as the, the process and we shouldn't, you know, there is a process where we could go to the number two bidder, but because of this, the huge discrepancy between the ranking, between the price, and let's face it, this is a technicality in many ways. If they had intentionally tried to hide this, if they had done anything that, that raised to a level that was a, a true ethical uh, issue, I think we'd be looking at this very differently. Um, but I don't think that is the case here. But... Um, for that, I, I think we would have that there's no way we would allow them to participate in it if that was the case. Um, but uh, because they made this mistake and because it's there, they are in violation. That's why we can't approve it. We can't move forward with them. But I think the best solution, the best interest for the citizens is for us to go ahead and start this process over. We might have more bidders on this, and that and competition is always a good thing. Um, we have Commissioner Drosky and the Vice Mayor Parnas, and then I think after that we need to call a vote here. I, I'd like to talk to my colleague from District 2 because I, I understand your comments and, and quite frankly I, I agree and sympathize with them, but I'm looking to see what your recommendation how to proceed is um, because we were given and our code provides for four distinct uh, alternatives for us to pursue. Um, going with a uh, bidder number two to get the price from number one, unfortunately is not an option. That's not the way our code um, reads. So we have to go by what we're, what our code requires us to do. Um, and it's actually written that way probably for a reason because, because we are a strong ethical city here in Deerfield Beach and we wanted to promote um, a stronger ethics ordinance. It was, that option was left out because you don't want a commission saying, okay, Let's go through this entire process. We've come up with one, two, and three. And then the commission saying, okay, but we don't like number one. We're just gonna pick number two and not have a reason for doing so or just because of politics or whatever is in play. Our code is meant to take that politics out of this procedure. 
uh, and to strengthen uh, this procurement process going forward. So that's why we don't have the option to willy-nilly pick, you know, option two or option three, because it's intentionally removed from the process to remove the politics from it. So given that that's not an option, and I understand your concerns, because I share those same concerns, but limited to the four options that our code provides us, how do you see us moving forward? Well, my feelings is this, is that um, uh, I'm concerned that, you know, we have the four options, but one of them wasn't to have a conversation, you know, with the remaining companies. And my issue is to have something that is structural, it's in place, it's a part of what you do. This is, this is the way you do it. You rank uh, the different companies. Um, you know, something did happen. Okay, once you have something happen where you, it's not a good idea to go with who was number one, what do you do in regard to the remaining companies? Do you have a conversation with them or do you just ignore them? Yes, we have four, um, four uh, options. However, maybe that should have been a fifth to have a conversation with those remaining two companies to see and have on record exactly how they dealt with it. What, what was their feeling on it? They made the, the ranking, they're there, irregardless if uh, it was only three. The point is, is that you have the ranking system. City of Deerfield Beach has a ranking system. So now when it doesn't work out, and the city attorney has advised us that, uh, you know, that if we were to go with number one, it just simply wouldn't be a good idea, nor would it be the right thing. So should we have a conversation with the remaining two? Should they be a part of this process or should they be completely ignored? That, that's my issue. And I think that the way that we're looking at this, we're pushing them completely aside and, uh, and, and, and they're not a part of the process anymore. We could move ahead by starting the entire process over again. And when the process is over again, we will have a ranking system where there will be three companies again, what, you know, and, and then uh, if something happens, they're never going to be a part of the conversation. Just, just, just move along. That's my issue. Uh, and that's my feeling with it. Um, maybe there should have been a fifth option. Vice Mayor Parnas. Well, let me say this. The codes that we read by the attorney tonight do not say we must go to number two or number three. It gives us options. Now, it gives us options to do what's best for the citizens of Deerfield Beach. Half a million dollars, is, to me, is not an option. There's nothing in there about negotiating or trying to beat them up to lower their price. They could have done that with the first bid, but they didn't. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to ask that my motion be moved and we vote so that we can get this project done without penalizing the citizens of Deerfield Beach. Okay, we, we have a motion. Uh, Commissioner Hudak, you have your hand up? I'm going to second the motion. Okay. Again. <laughs> okay, we have a motion by Vice Mayor Parnas, um, which is to reject all proposals and to restart. Uh, we have second by Commissioner Hudak. Um, can we have roll call, please? Mayor, Mayor. Yes. yes. Uh, just to be clear, we're starting over from scratch. Is that correct? Reject all proposals, which I believe is to start from the beginning. Uh, do we need direction on whether or not we're going for the RFQ process again or just the RFP process? The RFP. Okay, the RFP. That's what we're looking to do. Um, is everyone in favor of that going with the RFP process? Yes. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor to reject all proposals and to restart the process. Um, call the vote. We have a roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky? Yes. Commissioner Hudak? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Vice Mayor Parnas? Yes. And Mayor Gantz. Yes. 
Next item is item number five, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, amending Article 10, lobbyist registration requirements of Chapter 2, administration, providing for conflict, severability, on codification, and an effective date. This is first reading. No. Madam Clerk, I can't hear you. I couldn't hear because of the feedback. What did, what did you Sorry. ask? Uh, is there anyone that has emailed to speak on this item? No, sir. Okay. I don't see any hands up here. And we'll close the public. Uh, Commission, you want to comment? Discuss this? Roka, can you just give us a little uh, background for the public on this? Mr. Soroka? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you, Mr. Mayor. That's okay. Um, if you could give us a little con um, uh, This ordinance was prepared to update the city code to reflect consistency with the county's uh, ethical, um, excuse me, the county's lobbyist registration requirements and the fact that the city's been using uh, electronic uh, lobbying contact log system for years. Um, so this, these changes reflect consistency with the county uh, ethics provisions with respect to lobbyist registration and also to reflect the city's existing practice of allowing for uh, lobbyist contact log submissions via electronic software. Motion. Motion to approve. Motion to Commissioner Hudak. Second. Um, Commissioner Press? Yes. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky? Yes. Commissioner Hudak? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Vice Mayor Parnas? Yes. Mayor Gantz? Yes. Okay. Next item. Next item is comments by administration and legal. Okay. Mr. Santucci, do you have any comments? Yes, Mayor, just, just a few um, that I want to touch on. Um, you know, it's been, I, I think people are, are getting eager to get things back to uh, new, our new normal state or state, you know, uh, our new norm. But, um, and those plans are, are in place and I want the city commission to to better understand some of the things that, that um, I've been involved in and paying attention to. Um, obviously, the federal government has come out with their Reopen America uh, phased approach, which gives uh, each state a lot of leeway on how to, how to accomplish that, uh, because every state has very, very unique circumstances, and, uh, and we certainly are unique here in Florida. Um, so the governor has uh, put together a task force um, to talk about uh, how to reopen and what reopening looks like while we still have the COVID virus uh, among us um, and that it can still, uh, we can still function as an economy and, and, and as, a, as a community. Um, and even locally here, uh, those plans are underway. And so what is being referred to now as the Quad County um, being Monroe, Miami-Dade, Broward County, and West Palm Beach. Um, the the uh, elected officials and the healthcare professionals and industry experts, they're all communicating right now uh, to devise what that phased approach will look like for us. And I think that we need to manage expectations amongst the, the public in that regard, because we know that up in Duval County, they reopened their, their beaches there in Jacksonville. And I think since then, there's been a lot of questions of whether or not uh, or when uh, the beaches here in South Florida, Florida, particularly Deerfield Beach for us, uh, will reopen. And I think the thing to remember there is, is that we are vastly different than Duval County with the uh, amount of cases that ha uh, they have currently at 901. Um, compared to what, uh, you know, here, what we have here in Broward County, which is well over 
4,000 cases at this point. So, you know, we need to, 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 to do what's in the best interest of, um, of this area. And that's being done. And again, close uh, coordination with the other counties so that it can be a unified, as much as possible, unified regional approach to what we, re we, what we reopen and when. Of course, you know, here in Deerfield Beach, we're gonna have our nuances as well that we'll have to address. Uh, but we're, we're doing that in, in unison with, with, with our neighbors and I'm in close coordination uh, with the other uh, city administrators and our departments are in close coordination with their counterparts as well on devising the plans on how to do all of this. And so the planning process is underway, but I think, you know, we need to kind of manage the expectations that I don't, I don't foresee this being, you know, uh, next week or even maybe, the, you know, the week after that. Um, but, but only time will tell. And, and, and there is really no timetable for this either because it's not based off of time. It's, it's, it's based off the number of cases that we have and what that curve looks like. And we need to continue to see that downward curve in order to go from phase one to phase two to phase three and, and phase four. Um, and then, you know, if, if there's abuse um, or, or, or people are not paying attention to the restrictions as we go into the phase one, phase two, threes and fours, and we start to see that uptick, uh, then, then we're gonna, just gonna revert back to where we were. And, and so it's definitely a cautious approach. Um, and it's a, an approach that's based off of not looking at what is an essential business versus, versus not essential business, but looking at it from the perspective of risk. And so businesses, you know, as it relates to social distancing and, and what COVID means to us have different set, sets of risk and circumstances in which they're going to have to uh, address and tackle in order to, to come back to, uh, to open and, and under maybe different circumstances than what they were used to uh, prior to, to the virus hitting us. And that's all I have for this evening. Mr. Soroka. City Attorney. Muting me. I think you've heard from me enough tonight, enough tonight, excuse me. So no further comments from legal uh, comments by mayor and city commission. I think we're all in agreement that we've heard enough from you tonight, Mr. Soroka. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Moving forward, okay, uh, comments by the commission. Um, we're gonna start with uh, District 1. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Two weeks ago, the University of Washington was projecting that before this city commission meeting, uh, the state of Florida would have over a thousand deaths from coronavirus. Uh, as of this morning, we have 839. So we, we have definitely, you know, beat the projections uh, but we still had over five, we've had 556 deaths from the coronavirus from our last commission meeting. So it is important that we still be diligent in what we are doing. The state of Florida has over 27,495 cases, which is 12,991 more than we had at the last commit from the last commission meeting. Miami-Dade has 909,840 cases or 4,843 from our last commission meeting. Broward County, 4,149 cases, which is almost 2,000 from our last commission meeting. Palm Beach County, 2,296, which is over 1,160 cases from our last meeting. As the city manager pointed out, Duval County had a total of 901 cases. Duval County has over 957,700 residents. The city of Fort Lauderdale has 922 cases, more than the whole county of Duval, and they only have 182,000 people. So we are completely different from Duval County. I understand that, you know, we want our beaches open. I, I hear our residents, but what we're doing is working and we just have to be a little bit more patient. The city of Deerfield Beach has 86 cases, which is 51 more than two weeks ago, but it's far below Boca Raton, which has 358, or Delray Beach, which has 287, 
or even Pompano Beach, which has 317. So I wanna thank all of our residents. What you're doing and how you're doing it is working. I know that there are residents who take advantage of the situation, but the majority <coughs> of our residents are doing the right thing. And I wanna thank each and every one of you. I also wanna thank Ace Hardware, Winn-Dixie and Publix for helping out our first responders. Uh, they have done some special things for our first responders. Uh, as I was speaking with the chief earlier today, and I just wanted to acknowledge them. And the last thing I want to acknowledge is our candle of hope. Those of you who have driven by uh, Hillsboro and Federal Highway have seen the candle of hope. That is a uh, local artist by the name of Tony, and I'm gonna butcher his last name, Vela Vodka. Um, and he presented this piece of art, and it is support of our first responders. So I hope that when you go by, you see the candle of hope, and you think of our first responders. Uh, they're doing a tremendous job, and I just wanna put my hat out to all of them and thank them very much for keeping us all safe. Uh, please be strong, Deerfield Beach. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Uh District two. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to thank uh, the church goers um, in our city. Um, District 2, for having their Sunday services um, online. Uh, many um, Bible studies are, are online as well that they're practicing. And when there is a question about um, the procedures, as one church had called me, um, I called the city manager to ask, you know, did we have anything in place? But the point was, that they are abiding by the rules. Uh, we must uh, please, please practice the social distancing. The, sh the social distancing is working. To reiterate, uh, my colleague, uh, Commissioner Hudak, is 100% right. It is working. Uh, but make no mistake about it, there is going to be a new normal. What that new normal will reflect, we don't know yet. Uh, so much is still um, unveiling itself. I was just watching the news recently of a uh, parents that were first responders. Um, one, the father was a police officer. The mother was a firefighter paramedic and their five-year-old died. So it, <laughs> This, this disease is for real. Uh, it's hard to think of it that way when you go out and you see it and, and you know, see people interact. It's just hard to think that it's, it's that serious. Well, it is. And at some point, um, we will have a new normal. I think also we need to uh, address the fact that our city um, is doing a good job dealing with these with dealing with this uh this uh, virus um and i'm sure so many people will ask you know what is the city doing uh, and they ask that partially out of fear uh, because people are scared with this but i'm going to ask everybody in the city of deerfield beach to support our city staff because they are doing the most that they can do and along with that please support as much as possible uh, our local businesses. I've been trying to, to do that personally. Um, my desire for pizza has gone up unbelievably, you know, uh, uh, ordering it, you know, but I want to, you know, to help our, our, our local businesses. You know, they've been loyal to the city, uh, to the city of Deerfield Beach for such a long time. And I think that in this situation, I know we're limited, but everything that we can do, you know, we ought to do. And I'm just asking all of our residents on a night where you might put something on the grill, you know, order something from you know, Chick-fil-A, order something uh, from uh, the pizza, you know, uh, the local pizzas, uh, store, uh, stores that we have. Um, we don't want them to be hurt too bad. They're already hurt. And uh, so as much as possible, we want to um, do the best that we can. And you know, as tough as it is, 
We're going to get through this. As difficult as it is, as confusing as it is, as scary as it is, we're going to get through this. I like to thank my my colleagues, uh, Mayor Gantz, Vice Mayor Parnez, Commissioner Drotsky, Commissioner Hudak, City Manager Dave Santucci, Samantha Gilliard, our clerk, you guys are doing a good job. I mean, you know, we just got through debating some very tough, you know, points about a, uh, an item agenda. But you guys are really doing a good job. And what you do is instill confidence where right now we are challenged to have any measure of confidence. We don't know the end of what, where this is going to take us. But when you have people in, job, in, in place that are trying to do a good job and to bring about, you know, an understanding that we are there for you, we're going to work for you, and the most that we can do, that we're going to do. And I think you guys are doing that. So thank you for all that you're doing. The work that you're doing is greatly appreciated. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, Commissioner Preston. Uh, District 3, Commissioner Parnas, or Vice Mayor Parnas, my apologies. That's okay. Um, a couple of suggestions, if I may make it, that we direct code and our local police. If you go into a store and they're allowing people in without a mask, small shop or whatever, the bigger stores like Target, Publix, CVS, have put guards at the door. No mask, don't come in for the safety of the people in that store. And it's the right thing to do. I don't go out of my house unless I have gloves and a mask on. Why? I'm not sick. But the guy next to me doesn't know that. Maybe I am a carrier and have no symptoms. I don't want to be guilty of negligent homicide. I don't want anybody to kill me. My age getting the disease is pretty much fatal. We have to enforce the law as hard as it is. There are too many people that say, ain't gonna happen to me and they're endangering our citizens. I know in my village, we've had 12 cases so far, two are in the hospital. They're not doing well. I don't wanna see that multiplied. Until we're cleared, um, I don't know how many of you know, Festival Flea Market is open. City manager has the phone number. You can make an appointment or you can tell people to make an appointment. If you can't get a prescription, when you call the number to make an appointment, they will get you a prescription for the test. And it's by appointment only. The average waiting time is only 20 minutes per car. It's important if you're not feeling well, or you know somebody that's not feeling well, to get them tested. Try not to go to an emergency room unless it's absolutely necessary. Even my doctor says, you'll get sicker there than you will staying home. And I know this because my son has contracted it and he's getting better. And the ambulance, when he called him, said, stay here. You're not bad enough to go to the hospital where you're definitely going to be worse off. So we can beat this. But we all have to be vigilant. And remember this, being a tough guy is saving lives. Telling somebody it's not wearing a mask, hey, why are you endangering the public? You may not get your votes, but you can go home and say, maybe I saved a life. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, District 4. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I likewise want to thank the residents of not only my district and, and District 4, but all of Deerfield Beach for complying with the stay home at orders and putting the masks on when going out in public. I know this is not an easy situation uh, and it is certainly creating a financial havoc on our, on our country, um, but it is, it is, we will get through it. We will definitely get through this. Um, as my colleague from District 2 said, you know, we need to support our local businesses wherever we can. Uh, I need to learn how to social distance myself from my refrigerator. So that would be a great opportunity 
to to get off the uh, couch and to get out there and support our businesses better. Um, so it's certainly a sacrifice. It doesn't go unnoticed, um, not only to the residents, to our first responders, uh, to everybody who is in, involved. Just thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um, I'm also very proud to serve with the four of you. This is you know, difficult issues that we have, but everybody tonight, you came prepared. Uh, you did your homework, you read your backup. We had our various uh, positions and arguments ready to go tonight. Um, again, we don't always agree, but I do appreciate everybody bringing uh, their professional A game tonight. And I think the residents notice and they appreciate us for doing that hard work on, on their behalf. Saturday, May 2nd is my next Saturday office hours. Unfortunately, it cannot be in person, uh, but it will be virtual. Uh, I will be taking calls um, or available by Zoom. You can reach out to the city manager's office or just contact me directly. My direct email is tdrosky at deerfield-beach.com. So feel free to reach out to me. And then lastly that I have tonight, just one more issue um, for my friends in Deer Creek. Uh, today started uh, local bridge work that the city, there are five bridges in the city of Deerfield Beach that are having bridge work done. They're starting uh, today with the Deer Creek Bridge at Country Club Boulevard. It, it's going to include um, some work to the cleaning, uh, recoding the rebar, uh, sidewalk repair. So that will be the first bridge. Uh, there may be minor traffic disruptions and delays in that particular area, but the work will be done first in District 4, and then they'll move to bridges uh, in other parts of the city. So with that, continue to be safe. Thank you so much, and be strong. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Um, look, this is unprecedented, what we're going through. Our staff has done a great job. No one is going to do this perfectly. And uh, I'm really pleased with uh, our frontline workers who are doing everything they can um, and, and our citizens are, are, are doing an outstanding job overall. There are still some people that just don't get it. Uh, social distancing, they don't understand. Um, they don't, they are impatient, which I completely understand. And as all of us have said, that we are concerned about our local economy and our businesses here locally. And um, I agree with, with each one of you in that we need to get out and support our local businesses. This is a time where they need it. Um, it's disappointing when people are calling for people to lose their jobs and hoping that they would or insisting that they should. Uh, that kind of negativity is, is definitely in the minority of what this city is, and it's not what this city is about. And so I want to thank our workers. And for those, who are, those of you who are... Uh, out there in the public, thank you for following the rules. Um, uh, we will, it's always gonna be a battle, but we're gonna get through this. And we do have to watch the numbers. Each one of you are right. Um, as we see these things climb, I, I do wanna thank Commissioner Par or Vice Mayor Parnes for doing an outstanding job. He really busted his butt to make sure we got that testing site. He worked for, with others uh, outside of our city to get that open at Festival Flea Market. I really want to thank you, Vice Mayor Parnas, for doing that. It's an outstanding job. Uh, Commissioner Hudak, Commissioner Preston, um, you guys giving out the food on Friday. Uh, outstanding job. I, I really appreciate that. And look, this is tough. We all know how tough it is. And, and there's only five of us sitting up here in these seats. So we know how our phones ring. We, we, we hear the, the, the cries and the concerns of the citizenry out there. And this job isn't easy. A lot of us are trying to do it here while juggling another full-time job that all of us, I'm sure, have taken a hit on. I know I certainly have. Um, but I am really, really proud of each one of you. You guys have done an outstanding job, whether it be putting out videos just to inform the public, the communication that you're all doing. It's, it's really an outstanding job. I really want to thank each one of you. It sounds like we're all patting each other on the back, but that we don't get to see each other and we can't talk to each other outside of this. But I know how tough it is, and you're doing an outstanding job. I'm really proud to serve with you. Um, and, you know, we have situations out there where people are also trying to take advantage of the citizenry. And I ask all of you to watch out for that. It's my understanding, and it's one of the many pe the, the people who make some of these disgusting comments online are going around to elected officials 
trying to do a side hustle in which they somehow bring in masks from China. Now, keep in mind, they're not a vendor. They don't want to go through a proper vendor process, but they want to try to hustle and, and work their way in so they can make a buck and exploit uh, the citizenry during this situation. And I hope whether we see price gouging or we see situations like that, that we bring that out and, and get those people taken care of. It's not the right thing to do. We're all in this together and uh, we're gonna get through it together. Um, we are tied with the, with the governor's orders that tie us to Miami-Dade County, that tie us with Broward County. Um, I've been working with the other mayors in, in this county to try to get that and the message has been clear to the commission. It was impassionately pleaded tonight by, or today by um, Commissioner Lamar Fisher who represents us to try to get some separation between Broward County and Miami Day to give us some flexibility on what might happen as we start to slowly roll out um, changes in our policy. But again, those changes are gonna be based on the numbers. And, and I would much rather save a life um, than, you know, it's about um, looking out for, for our citizens and no one should be sacrificed during this, their health, um, somebody tried to exploit a comment that I made saying we can always make money. Well, you know what? Money can be replaced. In some way, money can be replaced. A life can. If you're too dense to understand that, I, I really can't help you. Um, it's ironic that we are facing a situation and that our safety is based on uh, the dense public and unfortunately is jeopardized by the dense public. So hopefully we can uh, overcome that. Um, we, I am having now almost uh, every other day meeting with the mayors of Northeast Broward County to make sure that we're all on the same page. And that as we make decisions that we know that will have a ripple effect and a domino effect on each other's neighborhoods, we wanna make sure that we're doing it to together and working in unison. I really wanna thank Mayor Chris Vincent, Mayor Glenn, Tr uh, Glenn Trost, and Mayor um, Rex Harden. Uh, those three gentlemen have been outstanding in, in communicating and um, in, in, in keeping each other informed, telling us about problems we've had. Uh, I, I wish some of our counterparts in the North would do that. We had an incident in which Tierra East was terrorized by over 50 motorcycles that came down A1A, tore through their parking lot, destroyed their property, and took off. If we'd been given a heads up by maybe Boca Raton or Del Rey, which we know they were up there, uh, our, our chief could have done something about it. By the time we were informed, they were already gone. And talking with these other mayors, they, I understand that they have seen the same problem also. As a matter of fact, one of them was able to videotape them. So, you know, communication is the key. It's going to help us get through it in cooperation. I have been communicating with the mayor of Boca Raton. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, you know, I know tonight they had a meeting. They've talked about opening up their only boat ramps that they have to commercial fishermen. Um, but you know, that communication is going to help us roll something out that's going to make sense for all of us. The reality is there's going to be some serious hard decisions we're going to have to make. Fourth of July. What do we do with Fourth of July? We've already had problems with over 90,000 people showing up for the last Fourth of July. I just want to put that bug in your ear and have you start thinking about that. These are deci tough decisions we're going to have to start making when we look forward. Um, I know that we've already made changes, the city manager has, when it comes to our, paying our staff and trying to, to make that fair and equitable to the taxpayers, but as well as taking care of our staff. Um, I also know we're making changes when it comes to our budget and looking at how this is gonna impact our budget. There were people that said, well, gee, let's worry about our parking revenue three days as we were getting towards this. We were three days into this and they were worried about parking revenue when our main concern is how do we go about closing our beaches and protecting our residents. You know, there's a time and a place to make those decisions. Those decisions are being made now. And I know our staff's working very hard to do that. And I really appreciate the hard work that they're doing. Um, thank you and be safe and be kind, everybody. Motion to adjourn. Motion from Vice Mayor Parnes. Second. Second by Commissioner Preston. All in favor say aye. 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 Stay safe, everyone.